this is Martin Crawford from ECS and I will be showing you how to do hydrogen sulfide performance testing using the Acrologs hydrogen sulfide detectors. This is applicable to almost all types of motor control system. Today we're going to be testing a carbon system, uh, but like I said, should be worked for chemical scrubbers and biological systems. Uh, next I'll be showing you the equipment and instruments we'll be using for testing. Okay, here's the instrumentation we're going to be using today, the Acrologs for hydrogen sulfide detection. Uh, for a carbon system, I like to have one high range, which is this one, the 0 to 50 ppm, for the inlet. And then for the outlet, I have the 0 to 2 ppm Acrologs. Now, the reason I have two of these is sometimes the inlet levels on carbon systems are below the detection limits of the 0 to 50. So I will hook this one up first and see what the inlet levels are. If they're too low to not register here correctly, then I will use one of the 0 to 2's for the inlet and the other 0 to 2 ppm for the outlet. These will read down to uh, below 10 parts per billion, where this one only will basically detection limits uh, down to maybe uh, a tenth of a part per million. So. If you're dealing with a carbon system where potentially you have low odors coming in, it's nice to have two of these available so that you can hook one on the inlet and one on the outlet if it looks like this one's not going to be able to detect. We want to get some readings showing we have some in and some out so we can use the low range for both in and out uh, on the detections. Next I'll show you where we hook them up at and how to set them up and the options there. Okay, next I'm going to show you where we hook up the uh, analyzer so we can do the inlet and outlet detection of hydrogen sulfide. But before you do this, you need to look over the performance test plan to see if any other data that you need to take as far as differential pressure, airflow measurements, um, vibrational readings, and these type of things that you can take readings on before you start the hydrogen sulfide performance testing or if it's not going to affect the testing, you can take them during uh, you're doing the performance testing. Sometimes during the middle, you may need to take di differential pressure readings or airflow readings, so make sure you list and understand all the items that you need to be analyzing during the performance testing period. Like I said, we're going to be working on this carbon system today. This is a radio flow carbon system, and where we're going to hook up the analyzers to is two areas that we can actually hook them up to. One area is basically you can hook them up to the differential pressure tubes. Right here we have the exhaust pressure line and we have the influent pressure line. Now these are stainless steel so it's going to be much harder to hook up to these than if we had some uh, actual sample ports. There is a sample port here on top where we can hook up to the inlet level uh, of the fan so we can get the inlet concentrations on there and that's where I'll be hooking up my inlet level to check out the uh, levels going into the system. There is no air sample line coming from the top so what I'll probably do is disconnect this differential pressure tube connection here or try to tie into the bottom of the tap here. On okay the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 0 to 50 ppm Acrolog, and I'm going to check the influent levels to see if there's enough hydrogen sulfide to get a good reading on the 0 to 50. If it looks like I'm not getting good readings on it, then I'll switch over and use the low range for the inlet. The first thing I have to do is turn the instrument on. As you can see, it's, it's saying off. At the top, there's a push button. You press down and hold it, and it will go through a startup sequence until it says on. When it says on, you press and tap and confirm again. It will then go through a startup and calibration sequence. Then we'll start measuring. Okay, right now, we're like I said, we're getting 0.0, .0 ppm, so I'm going to go hook it up to my outlet and see what kind of readings we get on the outlet. Okay, I've hooked it 
pushing up to the inlet, the pressure side of the fan pushing into the carbon vessel. And as you can see, I'm getting about 1.3 ppm in to the system. So this will be good enough to use the zero to 50. Now, if it was below about 0.2 ppms, I would probably switch over and use the low range on the inlet so I could get some good readings. But right now, as you can see, I'm getting some pretty good readings. I'm getting 1.4 ppm in. So I will leave it at that and call that good and use this one for my inlet range. Okay, so what I've done here is I've hooked up the low range, the 0 to 2 ppb, or 2 ppm on the outlet that goes up to the stack. Now a lot of times there'll be a separate sample port coming down that you can test from, but in this case I've basically just disconnected the differential pressure connection at the top of the stack, and I will connect it to the uh, stainless steel tubing going up to the stack for my outlet. Now, we need to turn it on similar like we did the other one as we push and hold, wait for it to count down. When it says on, we reconfirm by pressing again. It will go through a startup sequence. Okay, once you turn these on, the 0 to 2 ppm, it will automatically start logging. As you can see, the blinking indicator saying log. So right now it is logging the data, and it will take a sample every 10 minutes. So we'll come back and look at that in a minute and see what kind of levels we're seeing on the outlet. Let's go over to the inlet one. When you first turn the inlet on, the 0 to 2 ppm, or the 0 to 50 ppm one, it will not show logging when it starts up. So we'll have to start the log start by pushing this and confirm. Now you can see it's logging. The light log is blinking. It will sample every 10 seconds. So we got 1.9 ppm going in, and we'll wait for a minute or 10 minutes for the outlet levels to see what kind of outlet readings we are seeing on the outlet. Okay, it's been 10 minutes and we got our first reading and we have zero PPBs coming out, which is what we should expect on a uh, good carbon system with fresh carbon and installed correctly. If you get a high number or similar numbers that you get on the inlet, then you need to check for bypassing or some other type of issue. Also, you might want to check and make sure there's not any type of foul air in your sample lines. Okay, now that we've read the uh, auto logs run for the required amount of time, yeah, we need to basically stop the log and turn them off and get them sent back so they can, uh, detection instruments or CS can download the data. So what we want to do first is we want to stop the log. As you can see, the log light is logging, so we want to stop the logging. We do that by holding this down until it gets to log stop. We release and confirm again. As you can see now, the flashing log light is no longer on anymore. Next thing we need to do is turn the acro logs off. We do this again by holding the button down. It'll run through the menu. Then it'll count down. It'll say off, and then you hit it again to confirm. And there you go, it's off. Now we'll do the same thing with the 0 to 50. That was the 0 to 2 ppm one. The 0 to 50 is the same situation. First thing we do is hold it down and do log stop. 
As you can see, the log is not flashing anymore. And we hold it down. It will count down. Log off and hit again to confirm. And it's off. I'll go over that again here in a little bit. Uh, with them by themselves so that you can see exactly how to turn them off and on and to start and stop the log Okay, next what I'd like to show you is how to turn on and off the acro logs so that they can start analyzing and also to start and stop the logging so that it records the data so now once you have your acro logs connected to your inlet and outlet source Typically, this would be on the inlet. This is a 0 to 50 ppm analyzer. You can uh, turn them on and start them logging for the required time. Now, in order to turn this on, as you can see it is off right now, there is a touch button on the top that says touch. You will take and touch this and hold it. It will go through a countdown of kind of blocked out zeros till it says on, release, then hit again to confirm. It will go now through a startup menu to show it's being calibrated and started up. Once it does that, as you can see, it, it's now starting to analyze for hydrogen sulfide. It takes a sample about every 10 or 15 seconds, so you should start seeing some immediate results. If you have this hooked up to the inlet and you're seeing zeros or uh, very little, like 0.1 or 0.2 on the outlet, you may want to switch over and use a 0 to 2 ppm on the inlet so that you can get good data as the 0 to 2 ppm has a much lower detection limit. Now, if you're satisfied and you're getting good readings at this point, you'll want to start logging. In order to start logging, you'll press and hold the touch button again. It will go through two menu items. Number one will be status, and second will be, will be the uh, logging. So we'll press and hold, status, log start, release, and then press again to confirm. As you can see now, it is starting, the log light is flashing and it is telling you that it is now logging the data. And you will run this for your required amount of time, four, six hours, a week, whatever it may be. Okay, next we'd like to take a look at the low range. This is typically will go on your, um, your outlet for looking, uh, analyzing your uh, exhaust coming off of it. Again, you'll have the touch control here at the, at the front. You press and hold it. Again, the blocked out zeros will count down until it says on. Release, press again to confirm. And again, it will go through a calibration and startup menu. Now, the 0 to 2 ppm records and, and will take uh, samples every 10 minutes. So you won't see any data until after 10 minutes. But when you first turn on the 0 to 2 ppm, it automatically starts logging, as you can see the log button, button starting to flash right now. Now you're set up sampling inlet and outlet of the system. Okay, now you've finished your sampling period, whether it be hour, two hours, four hours, two days, two weeks, whatever it may be. The first thing you will need to do is we'll need to stop the log so that it makes sure the data is saved. To do this, we work in the reverse thing. We will touch the button here. It will go through status, log stop, release, press and confirm. And as you can see, the log button has stopped flashing. The next thing we'll need to do is turn this off so it doesn't sit there and keep analyzing. We press and hold the button. It will go through a various menu items. You still continue to hold. It will 
count down the blanked out zeros until it gets to off or flash. Release, press to confirm, and as you can see, the device is now off. This works the same thing, same way for the low range. Right now it is logging. We will press and hold to turn the log off. Status, log stop, release, press to confirm. And now as you can see, the logging light is not no longer flashing. Now we'll need to turn it off. Again, we press and hold until it goes to the countdown. The blanked out zeros will count down until it says off, release, press to confirm, and now it's off. These are now ready to be shipped back for the data to be downloaded and put into the final report.